Okay, so this is a, a video abstract of a paper that we recently submitted to the ePrint archive. And the purpose of this abstract is to give you a short, brief introduction to what this paper is about, and then you can read it for yourself afterwards. So the, the, the context is that we are looking at uh, photosynthesis and transport in photosynthesis. And this doesn't immediately have anything to do with quantum mechanics, you would think, but the fact is that in 2007 there were some experiments by Graham Fleming who did spectroscopy on a particular photosynthetic complex and saw some quantum mechanical features in that system. And that motivated us to look at this problem a little bit more closely. And um, a photosynthetic complex uh, would be something like the following. So you have here a lot of antennas, and these antennas, they will absorb photons and turn them into an excited electron, so an exciton. And this is the first step, it's an important step. And then this energy, however, has to be transported to somewhere else through a complex, which is an assembly of many large molecules, and this is the so-called FMO complex in that particular setting. And it has to be transported uh, to a reaction center here. And this is where this exciton that goes through here is actually used to start a chemical reaction, which in the end is the chemical reactions that take, break down carbon dioxide into well, oxygen and sugar. And um, that's really where photosynthesis start, starts. But what we really are interested in is one particular aspect of this, of this uh, whole process, and that's also the one that Fleming had looked at. And that's the, really the transport of the exciton in this uh, FMO complex. And so um, what is known is, experimentally, that this transport actually is very efficient. So it's almost uh, well, 100% or 98%, so very, very efficient. And it happens on very short time scales, so 5 to 10 uh, picoseconds, so very rapidly. And um, now, obviously, as we are theoreticians, so we would like to explain this. And uh, what we do is we abstract this a little bit, so we have this complex, and it's actually composed of several, um, well, uh, subparts. They are big sort of let's say molecules on which ex these excitons live. And these excitons will hop along these, these sites and go from up here to down there. So that's our theoretical abstraction that in the end we just have a hopping between sites in this molecule. And well, now you can, um, you can start to study this and of course we would like to make a quantum mechanical model. And what we will find is when we do this quantum mechanical model is that it actually doesn't give quite the right answers. And by that I mean the following. So if we plot here time, and here P of, of T, that's the probability that uh, an exciton that is started here has ended up down there. And let's say here is about a, a half. And what will happen if we just take a coherent quantum mechanical model, um, this probability will behave roughly like that. It will rise very rapidly and then it evolves into a very slow rise, and it actually takes a long time, so hundreds of picoseconds, to, um, to, to go to larger values than one half, and in fact it saturates at about 70% or something like that. So obviously there's something missing, because this does not coincide with the experimental results. Now, the interesting thing that is happening here is that if we now add another ingredient, namely decoherence, then we can actually explain the experimental results much better. So there's an intricate interplay between coherence, quantum mechanical coherence, and decoherence. And only when you have the right level of decoherence, so not too high and not too low, then you will get the right answers. And what will happen is actually, I mean, when I draw this, um, when you have sort of the right amount of decoherence in here, then the molecule, the, initially this probability rises in just the same way, but here it starts to change very rapidly and it goes to 1, almost 1, 98 percent or so. And really the key point that, uh, that uh, where things are different or starting to have different is, is this region, so for very short times actually. And this is where this dephasing noise, this decoherence actually attacks the system in a beneficial way. And what the, the key idea is that actually that it inhibits destructive interference. 
And this is how far one can explain this in very brief. So if you want to know the, the details of all the ways in which defacing of decoherence helps this transport, you can read the paper which uh, explains this all in great detail.